The bookstore. Not every opener is gonna be a winner, you guys. Hey everybody, I'm Michael from Team Epic Reads, and on YouTube is Michael Bookline, and you're watching the August Epic Reads Book Haul. Never book shimmy with a tower of books. What am I doing? I don't know how it's already August and summer is ending so quickly, but I've been doing some beach reading, as one does in the summer, and I don't know when I got to the point in my life where only two books is a good reading month for me. It's been a rough year, but I read two books this month. We have Nimona by Noelle Stevenson and A Reaper at the Gates by Sabah Tahir. So I wouldn't consider myself a graphic novel person, and by that I mean I don't read graphic novels at all, but I might now because I really enjoyed Nimona, and Noelle Stevenson just had a trailer for her new show released, she and it got me really intrigued in her work. And so I went back and read her graphic novel, and I really, really enjoyed this. This is about a hero and a villain, and the villain who acquires a shape-shifting sidekick, and it it's not what you expect it to be, like there are very moral gray lines, you don't know who's really good and who's really bad, but Nimona is just like the coolest, most badass character. She does whatever she wants and she can take on some fierce forms and I was really surprised by the twists and turns and like how much I enjoyed this. I'm gonna flip through a little bit of the art, but I don't wanna spoil it for you guys, so that's all you get to see. And I also read A Reaper at the Gates by Sabat Tahir, the third book in the Ember and the Ashes series, and I needed to pick this up as soon as it came out because if you guys read book two in the series, A Torch Against the Night, you'd know that quite a few of our characters ended in precarious, dangerous situations where we really didn't know where their fate was gonna lean. Uh, Elias, especially, I'm looking at you. And I needed to know immediately what was gonna happen to them. And I did find out in this book, I love these characters. Well, I love some of these characters. Helene, I hated, and now I don't know how to feel about Helene. Please don't come for me in the comments down below. I'm torn. And it was just, I'm so surprised that this is the first series that Sabah Tahir has written because I just think she's a fantastic author and I'm so hyped for the next book. So now we get into the super fun part of the video, which is talking about a lot of the books we have coming out in August. And the first one I have here is Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. This is about a boy named Michael who's an atheist at a Catholic school, which off the bat is not the best fit. And he thinks he's all alone in his struggles until he meets this group called Heretics Anonymous, which are all outcasts and sort of rebels in this school who don't fit in there. And he takes this group of people from being just a secret society to a rebellious group intent on revealing what the school has done wrong. And he takes it too far and all of the students' beliefs are tested and it's like hilarious and heartfelt. And every time I see this cover, I just want to spread butter across the top of it. Am I alone in that? Someone please agree with me. Also, this spine is so good looking. Wow, I hope no one heard me say that. So the next thing I have here is These Rebel Waves by Sarah Rash, and you might recognize her as the author of the Snow Like Ashes trilogy, and this is the first book in a new fantasy duology about a soldier, a pirate, and a heretic who all find their lives tested in a nation on the brink of war full of forbidden magic and black market pirate raids. And that's right, I said the word pirate twice. This is partially set at seas, and I love me a good pirate story. Arr, I'm sorry, I hate myself. <laughs> so the next book I have here is The Other Side of Lost by Jesse Kirby. And I think the premise of this sounds super interesting and relevant to current day because it's about a social media star who's just put on this facade about her life for the longest time and presented herself as a person she's not really. And then the pressure at all just like breaks. And I think it's absolutely something we can relate to nowadays of wanting to present yourself on social media in a way that's not necessarily true to your life. Like I, wouldn't post a picture of me doing nothing at home. I'd post a picture of me doing something fun, but I'm not doing fun things all the time. And so I think that part is super relatable, but when she breaks down and reveals she's not the person that she was presenting to everyone, she gets a lot of backlash and to escape it all and find herself again, she goes on a 200 mile hike in the wilderness alone. I'm gonna say right off the bat, I know I wouldn't survive that. So like, best of luck to you, girl. So the next book I have here is The Towering Sky. This is the third and final book in the Thousandth Floor series. And I don't have the physical thing yet, unluckily, but I have this really pretty cover that I hope is put right here. Otherwise I'm gonna look really silly. And this is the epic high stakes conclusion to the Thousandth Floor trilogy. High stakes, a thousand floors. There's no one here to laugh at my joke. 
this series is this futuristic world where in New York City, everyone lives in this really, really tall tower, a thousand floors. And the higher that you are in the tower, the more prestige and money you have in society. But the higher you are, the farther you have to fall. And people do fall, literally and figuratively. Essentially think of it as like a futuristic gossip girl. So XOXO readers, did I do that right? I never watched Gossip Girl. And while we're on the topic of series with sequels, I'm gonna talk about these two books right here. These are both conclusions to duologies, so these series are complete. And the first one we have is Never Wake by Amy Plum. And this is about a bunch of teens who suffer from insomnia. And so they go into this experimental procedure to get rid of their insomnia, but instead they end up in a nightmare world. And they have a lot of their worst nightmares come after them. And it's definitely not an ideal situation. And they're still trying to figure out how to first survive because they might not all make it out alive. And second, how to make it back to the real world. And the other book we have is Fierce Like a Firestorm by Lana Popovic, the sequel to Wicked Like a Wildfire. And this is a fantasy about two sisters who tried to break the ancient curse placed on their family by defying magic and death himself. And it didn't exactly go as planned. And so you're definitely gonna have to tune in to see what happens in this. And these covers to the series are fantastic. I want this as like a shirt, like a floral print shirt. So can somebody make that happen? And the next book I have here is Nine by Zach Hines, which is this really interesting speculative fiction novel where it's like our earth, except humans have nine lives. Like people say about cats, but they actually have nine lives. And the more lives that you lose and go through, the more you become a better version of yourself. Like you level up every time you die. And the main character, Julian, isn't convinced that this is a good thing. Like he's not trying to become the best version of himself. And he's he thinks something darker is going on in this world that they live in. And as most speculative fiction, there is. So you'll have to read to find out what's really happening here. I'm really excited about this next novel. It is The Truth Lies Here by Lindsay Klingel. And it's like Stranger Things meets Men in Black and I'm already sold. That's it, that's all I'm gonna tell you. I'm kidding. Um, this is about a girl who has sort of given up on her father. He's this conspiracy theorist and his mom and dad divorced because he got so wrapped up in his job and he was just like never a good husband or dad and she's sent to live with him one summer, except he's missing. And she's convinced he's just out on some trek to prove something true or false or whatever he can do to get attention, but he like really doesn't show up. And so she has to team up with the boy next door to find out if just maybe the things that her father has been talking about all these years are real and he's been taken by them. And people in the town are dying, so something real actually is happening. Like, it's bad. She's gotta figure it out. So the next book I have here is Hidden Pieces by Paula Stokes, and I really like the hidden pieces and there's puzzle pieces missing. I didn't need to explain that to you guys. This is a thriller novel about a girl who gained a lot of notoriety in her town for pulling a homeless man out of a building fire. But the thing is, she uh, it's partially at fault for starting that fire and she doesn't want people to know that. And she's felt guilty about it. Like she didn't purposely try to gain fame from it. But someone else was there that night that she didn't notice and they have been leaving her threatening messages and forcing her to do dangerous things with the threat of revealing the secret that she was at fault for what happened. And she's got to keep going along with what they're saying and it all comes to a head and you definitely have to read to find out how it ends. We just have so many cute covers this season, which definitely isn't a bad problem to have. And this is The Last of Us Story by Maggie Lerman. And I'd just like to say it's blurbed by Becky Albertalli. So that is an awesome feat to have for your book. And this is a rom-com set in prom time. So you know there's gonna be drama and there's gonna be a lot going on. And it follows this couple who was never really dating, but have broken up and the boy doesn't know what happened and the girl just like wants nothing to do with him. And then all of these like tragic, crazy things are happening at their prom and they're brought back together. They're both journalists and they're brought back together by their need to report on what's been happening, which is really an interesting angle on breaking up and getting back together. And you'll have to read to see if they put out the great report on what's been happening at their prom, but also to see if their romance can rekindle. The next book I have here is The Looking Glass by Janet McNally. And this is a book about a girl whose sister was her best friend in the world. They were super close, but then one day she goes missing and truly no one knows if she's alive or dead. They don't know what happened to her. 
and the sister who's still around receives this fairy tale book from when they were a kid that they love to read and it is a list of things and it's the only clue of what might have happened to her sister and so she takes her friends on a journey to find her missing sister and realize what happened to her and the moral of the story is that sometimes the damsel in distress is the only person who can save herself so you'll have to read what happened here and the next book I have here is a super swoonworthy romance, and that is In Another Time by Carolyn Leach. And this is set against the backdrop of World War II, and it stars a female lumberjack. Uh, females just got the right to be lumberjacks at this time, and there's a fellow lumberjack that she thinks is very attractive, and they are just like getting to know each other through chopping wood all day long, which is an interesting date to go on. I can't say I've ever done that before. And he's got a mysterious shady past and a lot of dangerous things have happened to him and their romance might hit some rocks and you'll have to read to find out if they end up together, but sometimes all you need is a really swoony romance. As always, I'm gonna finish this up talking about some books we received from other publishers this month. Thank you, everyone. And the books this month are A Blade So Black and Black Wings Beating. And both of these books, wow, I didn't realize how similar those titles were. Both of these books are very talked about on Twitter and sometimes I want things because other people want them. And so I'm glad that I have these both in my hands right now. Black Wings Beating by Alex London is a bird-inspired fantasy, which is not a fantasy you really read about often. It's usually all about like dragons, but Falcons are the new dragons is something that I heard about this book and it follows a pair of siblings as they go on a journey for power and wealth and fame and it's just said to be super epic and Adam Silvera blurbed it on the back and I trust Adam Silvera with my whole being so I'm excited for this. And A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney is an Alice in Wonderland retelling but with a black main character as you can see on the cover and I think that's a fantastic spin on the original story. And she lives in Atlanta and she's got real life issues with her mom and her GPA but she's also gotten issues with these nightmares that have come and almost killed her a few times and she's got the ability to go to Wonderland and this mentor comes to her and he starts training her and teaching her how to fight and survive Wonderland but one day he's poisoned and she has to travel deeper into this area that is just magical and strange to her in order to to save him and I am definitely very excited for this. So thank you so much for watching this month's book haul. Please comment down below with the favorite book that you read last month and give me some book recommendations and comment down below if any of these sounded super interesting to you. So basically write all of them in the comments down below and I will see you guys next month. Thank you so much for tuning in. Book shoot me out. I never know how long to do this for.